Hi school teachers of Reddit. What is the one thing that you want your students to know that you'd never tell them in person? When you think you are being genius by getting me to talk about random things at the beginning of class instead of teaching. I'm really allowing it to happen BC I don't have enough plan to cover a full class. My favorite high school teacher, he taught history, confessed on the last day of my senior year that he always started class by talking about something completely random because he knew none of us were ready to pay attention right when class was supposed to start. Had no idea. It was a really good strategy that made the transition into the lesson a lot less jarring. I knew you were cheating so I gave you a test with the answers in a different order for the rest of the semester. You clearly weren't very bright to figure it out. And yes I am that spiteful. It was easier than reporting the cheating. No shti, not high school but, in nursing school one of my classmates purchased the test keys. Made it to the third trimester of the program and come to find out. The professor for that part of our program makes his own exams. Dude dropped out after a week. Bye. One day you're going to come across people who are not being paid to tolerate you. And all of a sudden life is going to become considerably more difficult. I said something like this to a kid with a bad attitude when I was a volunteer tutor. Something to the effect of I don't have to be here and if you don't want my help it doesn't matter to me. He was shattered. Was crying when his mom picked him up. When I saw him again it was a completely different kid. Super respectful. I encourage my worst kids as much or more than my favorites because I don't want them back in my class next year. If you're jacking off in class we can tell. This is a common occurrence. Well it's either that or they're getting really into their phone. That we have much better hearing than you assume. We just choose our battles as it pertains to inappropriate comments. And sometimes I pretend not to see that thing you did just because I too found it humorous. And speaking to you about it would only result in me cracking up. It's so funny when they think they're getting away with something but no. It's just near the end of the day and you're too tired to deal with it. If you're going to eat in class stop staring at me while you're doing it. You're ratting yourself out. I can smell you. Everyone can. Please for the love of god. Use deodorant. Edit. Thanks for the gold silver. To the people asking why I wouldn't say this to a student. The answer is twofold. 1. Puberty is a smelly ordeal. And a lot of the kids can't help it. 2. Because god forbid it's not their fault. Infection. A cultural thing. Or improper washing of clothes. You don't want to alienate that student forever. I run a retail store and it's a pretty small shop and is on the pathway home for a lot of kids. Those stinky bee studs come in and stink up the whole shop so bad. I must remain professional. But I so badly want to tell them to leave and god wash their ass or put on some deodorant. That it's just as weird for me as it is for you when we bump into each other in public. I saw my English teacher at the grocery store one. We made eye contact and I nodded. He nodded back. We kept walking. Said nothing about it the next day. Never brought it up. That's proper procedure. I don't care that you came to class stoned. Just stop interrupting class. And for God's sake. Don't touch any power tools while you're stoned. I knew a guy that would come into first period stoned. He would always complete his work extremely fast and accurately too. Then he would just stare at his paper or whatever when he's done. Basically a genius when stoned. Edit. I was not anybody's teacher. Yes. I do have favorite students. No. I won't tell you who they are because that would discourage you. But yes they're probably who you imagine them to be. I tell my students that of course every teacher has favorites. But we don't have a quota. There is always room for more. Then I tell them the characteristics I really like in students. Like authenticity and perseverance. My gamer tag. I usually say there's a policy against it but there isn't. I just don't wanna play Overwatch or whatever with a bunch of relatively good kids who turn into total monsters when they play video games. If I tell the cool ones. It'll get around. 
I'd imagine the hot teachers are very aware of the students' perception of them. And X200B. Edit. Obligatory thank you to all those hot teachers who gave me the subject matter to get my most upvoted comment post as well as my first reddit silver. Neat. One year teaching 10th grade there was a girl very obviously crushing on me. I just made sure never to be alone with her. I can definitely hear the horrible things you are saying. Yes. I see that you are on the other side of the room. I may be. Old. To you but I am certainly not deaf. Also. That teenage boy is definitely going to buy you a Big Mac in exchange for oral SX. 100 out 100 times. I need the story on that second one. This girl was telling a boy about how hungry she was and didn't have any money. They didn't think I could hear them of course. She says. Double quote. I'll suck your DCK if you buy me a Big Mac. We're not exactly in the best area here. I pretended like I didn't hear it of course. I hate the texts as much as you do. But everyone just shrugs when I suggest changing them up. I'm sorry they made us keep that awful after book on the list. I genuinely offered to buy them all back from students so I could burn the waste of time that they are. I had an eccentric literature teacher in high school. DR. Attic. Who was required to teach the Odyssey. He absolutely hated it. So much so. He taught us off of the cliff notes. He explained how he was teaching it to us under protest. In his very thick Polish accent. Just another example. He organized the class into rows. Then by gave each person a rank. The first in the row was the captain. And so on. You got promoted or demoted for getting answers right. But also for completely arbitrary reasons. I actually teach middle school rather than high school. But I play. I love them a whole bunch. I do actually tell them this. That's not the thing. But goddamn every single middle schooler is an asshole. Like. Even the best ones. They're all assholes. You can't help it at that age. Part of the process of being a good middle school teacher is accepting the assholishness and figuring out ways to work with it. Don't worry. Guys. Your peers. And you. Will stop being assholes soon. Most of you. Anyway. Also. All the things you think your parents and teachers don't know about. We do. We've done it all. We just would prefer not to think about you doing it because you're much too young. Edit. Suwa You weren't an arsehole when you were in middle school. You're the exception. Congratulations. You special person. You win the trophy. I've taught more than 700 kids in my career. But I didn't teach you. So I don't know. A lot of us probably drink. Smoke. Sleep around. ETC more than you do. And hearing you talking about it and trying to hide it as if it's something we wouldn't know about is richly ironic. My entire high school's English department came to the same fancy restaurant's bar most weekends together to talk shti about their students, it was an hour across town and not likely the kids from our school would ever be in a fine dining place that far away. I worked there for over a year as part of our wait staff. Waiting fine dining is a killer gig if you know anything about wine, when I was in my early 20s. I loved talking shti about my old classmates and hearing their honest opinions about me after a free bottle of $200 wine. A few off the top of my head. Just because I like you as a person doesn't mean that I won't fail you. Being smart isn't a justification for being lazy and I can't pass someone that never hands in work. I move you away from your friends because they were taking you down with them. You have a real future in sports but you need to pass my class to play them. Your friends were making you fail and. If you don't get to play volleyball. I don't know what kind of future you have in front of you. I wish that the positivity that you get in my class could follow you home. I've met your parents and they are a nightmare. I do my best to encourage you here but I know that. Some days. That just might not be enough. I have never and will never find a student intimidating. That's why I laughed at you when you asked me if I knew who your father was. Yeah. He's the manager of a car dealership. That means nothing to nobody. I had a kid throw a desk at me and while it scared me in the moment, it didn't make me fear him. One day. 
you will meet someone who has real power and I just wish that I could be there to see it. I can see who you have a crush on in the classroom. One of the most valuable lessons I can teach you is to fake looking busy. If we're supposed to be working on an assignment or reading or whatever, and you see me coming your way, at the least have a piece of paper on your desk and a pen in your hand and some sh tea on your paper. And then I won't bother you. If you have nothing going on and can't even be bothered to make it look like you're trying. I'm heading your way. This lesson will be invaluable with eventual bosses someday. That I lied to you when I said I was 40. I was actually only 21 and I was only a couple of years older than you. I've seen you at the club and I've seen you partying. Furthermore. I have run into you in public way more times than you realize. But half the time I run away. The other half the time you catch me before I can. Also. When I was at the mall. The guy you pointed to and asked me if he was my boyfriend was just a random tinder date I just met. He was definitely not my boyfriend. Edit. Since I keep getting asked how I was able to pull off looking almost twice my age. Here goes. First of all. I had older teachers and the administration backing up my story because they were afraid that if the student knew how young I was they wouldn't respect me. Second of all. I had a very serious reserved attitude during the job. No smiling. Very blunt. No nonsense. Only very rarely did I crack the occasional joke. Lastly. I did dress frumpier than I normally would in dark. Formless colors and sometimes I even gave myself a bit of dark circles under my eyes with black eyeshadow. Of course some students still questioned it. But when you have all your authority figures telling you one thing. It's rather difficult to not believe it. Edit 2. I taught in Thailand. Meaning the students weren't in close proximity to foreigners all too frequently so they didn't have much perception of what a 40 year old foreigner should look like. I also look very racially ambiguous. My racial ambiguity also helped me out here. White people age very differently than black people who age differently than Asians. Etc. Your sense of entitlement is most likely acquired from your upbringing. So parent-teacher conferences to discuss your grades and going to dish tea when the parents just blame us. Despite you putting in little to zero effort. To my freshman. Yes I always know when you didn't do my math because you stayed up late playing Fortnite. You added me as a friend on Epic so I see that. Also the amount of homework not done in lower grades when new battle passes come out is so coincidental. To a specific freshman. I support your desire to become a streamer. But editing videos should not keep you away from your homework for a whole week and your friends always rat you out when you stay home skip to make edit those videos. To all high schoolers I teach. You're dumb. But I do love you guys. I'm not stupid and while I know you cheat on your homework. I don't care since it's only worth 10% of your grade and you're foregoing the practice you can get before the test. To the 6th graders I teach math too. Dear lord you make me cringe so hard I have to take ibuprofen some days. I have so much more. But my lunch break is almost over. I don't know if there's an exact quote I'd use. But I wish I could let my students know how dumb they look sometimes. And how they need to relax and stop taking themselves so seriously. I also frequently find myself wishing I could rag on kids clothes hairstyles that they've obviously put way too much time money into. But these thoughts only cross my mind when they're being assholes. That's the unprofessional petty stuff I'd say. I could think of something much more wise. But it's my lunch break and Friday and my brain is fried from trying to keep these assholes together a week before finals. I taught after school care summer school for a year and I want so badly to tell them that. Dot. Common now is a great time to find out who they are and to stop parroting what they hear other people say. 2. Comma stop trying so hard to make Jamie like you and be your friend because even though you and Jamie have been friends since pre-K. People growing apart is normal and Jamie is a manipulative Ming Muffin. 3. Comma I kept Owen and other troublemakers close to me in class because giving them just a little positive attention was infinitely preferable to giving them all of my attention in a negative light. Plus. Maybe they just needed someone to listen and give them one on one. Which I'm happy to do. 4. 
comma it's useless saying it because it's not going to make a difference. But this week's crisis won't matter next year or maybe even next week and it certainly won't matter on your deathbed. And X200B. The odds of you using any specific piece of knowledge you learn in high school is slim. The odds of you using some piece of knowledge from high school is near absolute and you have no idea what it's going to be or when it will happen. So you may as well try it all of it. The biggest thing you're going to learn is how to learn. One of the most memorable things a teacher said to me I really glad she did say it to my face. Double quote. I really like you as a person. But I hate you as a student. My French teacher told me this when I was in high school. During this period where I was really depressed and on the verge of flunking out. Having her be so honest with me and pointing out that I was wasting my potential made me want to do better and eventually I did. Sort of late to this party. But I often want to tell my students to enjoy themselves more and worry less. And I guess I do tell them that pretty often. But what I really wish I could communicate is that it's perfectly natural to break the rules and be a little more reckless at their age. This would be pretty irresponsible of me to tell them as kids need their teachers to be role models of good impulses. Not bad impulses. But sometimes I want to. Kids today seem very frightened of the future and don't want to take chances. Especially when it comes to having fun. I don't blame them based on the environments they are raised in. Also if they have an A plus in my class. They can make a low F on the final and still wind up with an A. I'd tell my kids that their stupid decision to stay out on the weekdays and not do any work will probably lead to them doing the same thing their parents do and living the same life. All my kids are incredibly low income. Also, their forced helplessness is not their fault. But I wish I could tell them to recognize it and do something about it. Lastly, please, for the love of God, do the fucking weeding. It's not hard. I specifically. I used to teach English to high schoolers in France. Most of my students were really good. A few of them I would have really liked to say to their faces that they were little shts and need to work on not being such douchebags. Edit. Also I know Europeans are a bit different with this than Americans but get real deodorant and wear it every day. Putin. I teach middle school. Not high school. But for me. It's that I know shti sucks at home. I see it every day when you come into my class. I see the tears you're hiding. The pain behind that class clown smile. The emotional fragility behind your tough guy persona. I know exactly what it's like to come from a broken home. I wish I could do something. But until you come to me. All I can do is try and let you know. With a look. A smile. A subtle turn of phrase. That I'm always there for you when you need an ear. Or a shoulder. I teach special needs 11-14 year olds and I tell them that growing up is going to be hard for them and not everyone is going to be as understanding or patient as the staff at our school and they need to learn to reel it in sometimes. I'd also tell them how precious and wonderful they are. Even when they drive me mad asking the same question over and over. They might not have the same advantages as other children but their gifts are just as legitimate as any other child's. Some of them might not know how to flush a toilet but they sure can draw a perfect replica of the Death Star. Some can't remember their own birthday but they smile every morning and say how happy they are to see us and it's just lovely. I love my job.